Hi, this is Sam Botstein from MachineSkills.com. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all of our machine tutorials, and check us out at MachineSkills.com for our new courses, as well as our machine sounds, and of course, all of our machine tutorials. In today's tutorial, we're going to take a little bit of a look at how to use the engine options in the machine sampler, and a little bit of how to actually move beyond them and get more creative sound design happening just with the FX filter section of the machine sampler. So we aren't going to use any external effects, we're not going to use any third-party VSTs or even built-in effects in machine, we're just going to do everything within machine sampler in order to create the often very sought-after, coveted, lo-fi, sampled hip-hop sounds. So here we have a simple drum loop, and we also have a 808 kick from Machine's library. You should all have it. It's the 8081 kick. And layered on top of one another, it sounds like this. So this sounds good already. It's very straightforward, but it is kind of extra clean. What we're really looking for is a dirty, crazy, lo-fi kind of sound. A lot of producers will actually sample 808 or 9019 sounds, any of the Roland drum machines, through a MPC-60 or an MPC-2000XL, any kind of lo-fi sampler in order to get a certain coveted sound. Luckily, Machine has us covered in that we have emulations of both the Akai MPC-60 and the EMU SP-1200, which are called MP-60 and S-1200 in Machine, respectively. If we solo our 808 kick briefly, you'll be able to hear the difference right away when I turn the engine from standard mode to MP-60 mode. So you can hear the characteristic bit reduction, you can hear the resulting distortion, and we can hear even some aliasing. We get sort of a high mid-range aliasing sound happening throughout. For such a short 808 sound, this is a really fantastic distortion that we're getting just with one click of a button. We can also go to an SV1200 emulation. The SV1200 has similar specs, but just a slightly lower sample rate. It's instead of about 40 kilohertz, it's closer to 26, 27. Here's what that sounds like. So on this one, you can hear the aliasing a little more clearly because the sample rate is lower. We can actually hear a sort of high-pitched tone that moves with the envelope of the entire 808 sound. In order to keep things consistent, we can use the same preset across multiple different sounds. So we can use the MP60 engine preset and the MP60 engine preset on both the sampled drum beat and the 808 sound we're using. This is what that would be like. So with very little effort, we've totally transformed the sounds that we're working with. The same goes for the S1200 or the SP1200 emulation. So these are really dramatic effects. With the S1200 option, we actually have different presets for different filtering options. So you can have a low pass, low mid, high mid, or high pass filter going on. But if we actually use this other section of the sampler, the FX filter section, we're able to actually move far beyond what we could just do with these different engine modes or presets. So if we solo our 808 for a second and look at the FX filter section, we'll actually notice that not only do we have a sample rate reduction control and a bit reducer control, we also have a filter that we could turn on and we have this compressor and a drive control. Now with the drive really high, you'll start to hear the overdriven or saturated kind of 808 sounds that we're used to as opposed to just sort of dry, untreated, raw 808 sounds. So here's a before and after on that. A hundred percent is pretty hardcore. If we choose something in the middle and introduce some compression, we'll actually have a better result.
one thing that we could consider here is actually how much we're introducing. If we keep a subtle change, as we add these four effects together, we'll actually have a more consistent sound, as opposed to having the drive at 100% and everything else at zero. So here I've moved below the sample rate of both the MPC-60 and the SP-1200 by going from under 12 bits, we're actually going down to 10 and beyond. You can actually try to emulate the specs of both the sample rate and the bit reduction that these samplers had. So for the MPC-60, it would be at about 40 hertz. We can't quite dial that in, so you can choose between 41.8 or 39.3 kilohertz. And just as soon as you turn the effect on for the uh, bits reduction, you get to 12. This is what the specs of an MPC-60 sound like using these effects. What strikes me about this is the sort of high-pitched click we hear right at the beginning. For the S1200, sorry, the SP1200 emulation, we're actually able to go lower towards where that sample rate was. It was about 26. Again, we have to straddle that between 25.5 and 27.1. Again, this just gives us a sort of high click. If we introduce some drive and some compression, we can get back closer to what that emulation was like. Of course, this gives us so much more control as opposed to just preset controls. We have these four controls and as soon as we introduce the filter, we have even more. So what I would recommend is playing with all these settings on your different sounds you know, you could take this as far as you wanted. You could actually use these four effects on all of your sounds on all of your groups if you chose. This makes it a little bit harder to keep things consistent across all the different sounds, where before we could just choose the same preset and have it, you know, be sort of a beat that was pretend sampled through an MPC-60 or something like that. We're actually going to have to either match these settings, which is tedious, or use sort of different varying sample reduction and compression and drive and bit reduction, which can be cool, but is a little inconsistent. The way that you might want to use the same reverb preset or put reverbs on the entire group, it would make sense to sort of match these settings. With the reverb, it's like putting everything in the same virtual space, and with these settings, it's like using the same sampler. However, using this control, you're able to create any kind of sampler you wanted, samplers that never really existed. You are limited by the DSP available in Machine 2, but you can go as low as one bit, you can bring the sample rate all the way down to 54 hertz, you can take the compression and drive all the way up and make crazy things. At one bit it barely works, right? So really quickly, you can get a mean sounding 808 sound. With the filter on, you're actually able to take out some of the really high stuff that we've introduced by lowering the sample rate and reducing the bit rate. So if we just cut out things above like, you know, 2K, maybe we have no resonance on, we're able to get a more focused bass kick. If we repeat the same sort of process on our drum loop, I'm just gonna sort of turn knobs just a little bit on, almost at random, we'll be able to really quickly make something that works together. So to me, that's hitting really hard right away. So this is a really simple and easy technique in order to get a lo-fi sort of drum sound to go even farther beyond what you could do just by sampling things through a vintage sampler from the 80s. 
But at the same time, this is an opportunity to really dive deep into Machine Sampler and learn all of its little eccentricities and different sweet spots in order to create awesome things with any kind of sound you've sampled. Make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube for all our machine tutorials and check us out at machineskills.com.